Well, I'm excited to talk about uh, the mortgage banking space. Uh, we've been working with these folks for the last 20 plus years, and uh, I've really enjoyed working with, with these mortgage bankers in part because uh, you know managing risk is a daily affair for them in terms of underwriting you know, loans and, and managing interest rate risk. Um, we found that they are very financially savvy. And so the concept of a captive insurance company um, in, in being used to better manage their risks uh, tends to, to be a, a pretty favorable discussion uh, with a lot of these mortgage bankers. Um, and, and in the last 20 years, we've seen them grow and scale up quite significantly in which this captive has, has been a big part of their operations. But I'd like to take a couple of minutes and talk about uh, what these folks actually do and um, how the captive can help manage risks. Um, so, so a mortgage banking firm, essentially, they will fund a uh, residential loan and they will use essentially a line of credit uh, called a warehouse line uh, to fund these loans and then package up these loans and uh, sell them in bulk to either a government entity or a private institutional investor. Um, and as a byproduct of that, they build in a margin, which is essentially their revenue. Um, but the other side of that coin is that when they do sell off these portfolios, they're making certain representations and guarantees about the quality of the loans. And there's provisions in which these investors require from these arrangements that they're able to essentially push back some of these loans to these mortgage bankers. Um, and a good example would be uh, in the event of any type of fraud. So if fraud is discovered in the loan, despite best efforts from the mortgage banking firm, essentially what happens is they have to buy back that loan from the investor. Now, there are circumstances in which the loan gets taken back and the underlying asset, the piece of real estate, has potentially gone down. And the banker is receiving this asset back um, and essentially taking a loss. And this happens all day, every day to varying degrees. And it's, it's a part of sort of the business practice of a mortgage banker. But what if it happens in mass? Um, what if there's a ton of these loans coming back? And uh, a lot of us will remember that back in 2007, 2008, um, there was the big mortgage meltdown, players like Countrywide and uh, Ameriquest and New Century essentially had obligations to buy back um, a tsunami of these types of loans. Um, there were the, the press called them the liar loans, stated income loans. And so essentially it was in part due to this buyback obligation that um, these, these firms went under. So, so there is a real existential risk to these companies and the savvy players in the space recognize that. So we often uh, get brought in by attorneys or financial advisors or CPA firms for these mortgage bankers to talk about the utility of this captive and better managing that risk. So, so, so what does that really mean? Um, most of you on this will know that a captive insurance company is essentially a closely held insurance company that's set up to insure the risks of um, related companies, uh, for example, a mortgage banking firm, um, and the captive will be owned by that same owner. And it can issue policies um, to cover this mortgage buyback risk. So essentially, it's a regulated entity. It's going to issue policies like any other insurance company. You're going to make premium payments like any other insurance company. And there will be years in which you have losses, and that's going to uh, be adjudicated and you're going to reimburse your mortgage banking firm for those losses. But more times than not, like any other insurance company, you're going to be profitable. So there's going to be this retained earning or surplus within your captive, which allows you to build a bigger capital base within this insurance company. And we've seen that these, these mortgage bankers have taken advantage of the scale to essentially maybe buy less commercial insurance and retain more risk formally inside their captive. Uh, a nice byproduct, a couple of nice byproducts of this would be, first of all, all the premiums that are paid are tax deductible. So in this sort of last mortgage cycle where our clients made a lot of money, they had bigger tax bills and the ability to deduct premiums into their captive really helped manage some of their income tax exposure. Um, another byproduct would be that these clients are 
in big businesses and do quite well. And sometimes they're in states that are very litigious. And so there's asset protection benefits of creating these insurance companies in that the assets inside the captive are really meant to pay claims. So they're not really there for judgments or creditors. And they have a you know, domestic insurance regulator sort of making sure that's the case. So there's, there's definitely a byproduct of, of asset protection in this, in this mix. So, so beyond that, what we found in terms of other reasons to set up a captive in the mortgage banking space is that a lot of these banking firms will retain what are called servicing rights. And what that means is that they'll package up and sell off these loans, but they want the ability to continue to service the loans, to send out statements, collect payments, um, possibly initiate foreclosure proceedings, because that is a nice recurring piece of revenue for these entities. Um, and, and it helps offset some of the cyclical nature of the loan origination cycle. Uh, the downside of retaining that obligation is that we are currently in a very onerous regulatory environment right now, particularly in the COVID era, in that there's a ton of consumer protection. And a lot of regulatory bodies want to make sure that a bad mortgage servicer doesn't do harm to you know, innocent borrower. And so despite best efforts, despite best processes, um, sometimes you run afoul of these things. And so if a regulator comes in and says, you messed up, uh, we're going to fine you, we, uh, you hire an attorney to defend yourself, those are all potential uh, claims that you can file against a policy that we call administrative actions, which can reimburse the company for those types of, of events. Um, so those two pieces are really the foundational uh, type of risks that our mortgage bankers are most interested in. Um, but once you have a captive, you can do a lot of other things. So what we found that our popular lines in our mortgage bankers would be uh, directors and officers coverage is, is fairly popular. Um, when you buy it commercially these days, the premiums are really, really high based on, on, on big claims experience, not necessarily in the mortgage industry, but just at large. And so oftentimes our clients would rather retain that policy in their captive and capture the underwriting profit themselves. Employment practice liability is also a very popular line right now. Um, it's a very labor intensive type of business. So our clients tend to have hundreds, if not thousands of employees. And so issues of hostile work environment and wrongful termination and sexual harassment, that comes up. So our clients either decide to uh, buy a EPL policy commercially and have a captive issue that policy to cover anything that might be excluded explicitly from their commercial policy. Uh, or we have a number of them that decide the commercial policy isn't worth the paper it's written on. So they're just going to not buy commercially and buy it through their captive. So that's a, a quick suite of policies that I think uh, makes a lot of sense to the mortgage banking space. Um, to, to sort of round out the, 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 my comments on, on mortgage bankers. Um, you know, what are some of the considerations and maybe challenges in this space? Um, you know, ideally, you operate a pretty clean shop. And by that, I mean that the, the firm has really sound practices, good processes. They don't have a ton of mortgage buybacks. They're servicing things with, with integrity. And so the claims level isn't necessarily super high because if it's consistently historically super high, setting up a captive, you're just kind of, in our opinion, trading dollars. So that might not make a ton of sense. Um, and, and again, to reiterate, most years are gonna be profitable for the captive. Um, and, and so that allows you to build a bigger capital base to take on more risk in the future. Uh, another consideration is just simply scale. Um, we have sometimes smaller cap, uh, mortgage banking firms call up interested in the captive. And between the upfront expense and ongoing expense um, and just the, the, the effort um, to, to get a captive set up, you want to make sure you're big enough to be able to support that and justify it. Um, the last piece I would say is that the mortgage banking industry is as cyclical as any industry. Um, and we're coming off of a uh, huge growth cycle and now potentially into a very uh, significant slowdown. So what do they do with a captive? Um, certainly when things slow down, the 
the owner has the option to decide to potentially purchase fewer policies, maybe only buy the most critical policies. Or one option is to literally issue nothing, right? You can, you can come to us and we go to the regulators and take you into dormancy, which essentially is uh, the ability to go to the regulators and say, there's going to be no activity. There's, uh, we're essentially going to put it up on the shelf. And um, the administrative uh, burden and also the management costs go precipitously lower, um, which is good for the client. And one day, inevitably, the market will pick up again and it cycles back and the client can pull it off the shelf, dust it off and uh, fire it back up as it was. So we found really tremendous utility. We thankfully have a pretty good concentration of these clients in-house. We feel like we know the space pretty well. And um, uh, we think that this industry is particularly suited for, for using a captive. Um, and with that, I want to sort of open it up. Does anyone else have any other comments relative to this? Um, <clears throat> so I'll just make a couple of quick comments just to kind of dovetail on the things that Max had said. Um, so what we've done here at RMA is to create a customized policy for mortgage putback insurance. Uh, so everything Max was saying is correct. And so I just wanted to point out that um, – that this particular policy is called mortgage putback insurance policy, and it is designed to cover the errors and emissions, if you will, that are specific for mortgage uh, mortgage bankers. Um, and the verbiage is just simply, you know, the uh, it, it gets triggered when there's a forced repurchase of a mortgage originated by the insured from an investor currently holding a mortgage security that was originated by the insured. Um, so. Essentially, it covers a broad range of errors and emissions that can occur, including the things that uh, Max had mentioned, if there are certain errors that happen or, uh, you know, within the processing or the underwriting of the mortgage uh, or in the event of fraud where the investor requires, you know, a forced repurchase. Um, So that's one thing I wanted to mention is that we do have a customized policy and, uh, also to dovetail on the things that Max had said about, uh, you know, building up the capital base. Um, and one of the beneficial things of doing that is that uh, in the future, if there's a special need that a, that a company has, um, they can tap into a special insurance need. They can tap into the cap. For example, one of our clients required a very large cyber policy, you know, that was difficult to get in the traditional markets. So we were able to construct that in within the captive because they had built up such a capital base, and it was in the in the tune of about a ten million dollars cyber policy. So, you know, again, a captive can allow companies to be creative and uh, uh, and develop business easier. 